Let's take a look at a nodal analysis problem with complex impedances that requires us to use phasers in our circuit analysis. Here's the circuit we're going to take a look at. Two voltage sources. One with a magnitude of 20 and a phase angle of 90 degrees. A 5 ohm resistor. plus J 20 ohm inductor, a minus J 10 ohm capacitor, and another voltage source 10 at 180. And it's all connected together down at the bottom of the circuit with our old friend, the reference node. So we've got one, two, three, four nodes in our circuit, but only one of them is an unknown voltage. We know the voltage at this node. It's 10 at angle 180. We know the voltage at this node. It's 20 at angle 90. We know the voltage at the reference node. It's by definition zero volts, which leaves us one voltage node that we have to deal with. We'll call that V1 phaser. Our strategy with nodal analysis has always been to sum the currents leaving the node. So let's go ahead and draw our arrows in and write our nodal equation. At node V1, coming out of the node through the 5 ohm resistor, we have V1 phaser minus the voltage on the other side of the 5 ohm resistor, which is 20 at angle 90 degrees, divided by the resistance in between 5 ohms, plus the current coming out of node V1 through the J20 ohm inductor, the voltage where we're at, V1 phaser, minus the voltage on the other side, which is 0, divided by the impedance in between, plus J20 plus the current coming out of node V1 through the minus 10J capacitor, the voltage where we are, V1 phaser, minus the voltage on the other side, 10 at angle 180, divided by the impedance in between, minus J10. And that's all the currents, so it sums to zero. We have one equation and one unknown, the easiest way to deal with this is just to go ahead and collect up our coefficients and do the complex arithmetic. Let's do that. On the left-hand side of the equation, we're going to have one-fifth. That takes care of this term. Plus one over plus J20. That takes care of this term. Plus one over minus J10. That takes care of this term. And all of that is times V1 phaser. On the right-hand side of the equation, we're going to move the 20 at angle 90 divided by 5 to the right-hand side, and it turns positive. 20 at angle 90 divided by 5. Plus the minus 10 at 180 divided by minus J10 comes to the right-hand side and turns positive as well. 10 at angle 180 divided by minus J10. Now it's just a matter of doing the complex arithmetic. There are some things that you can do that will make this a little bit simpler. You can convert the 10 at angle 180 into a minus 10, purely real. You can take the 20 at angle 90 and turn that into a plus J20, purely imaginary. If you do the arithmetic on the right-hand side, you should come up with a sum of 3 at angle 90 degrees. We'll divide that by the coefficient of V1 on the left-hand side, 1 fifth plus 1 over plus J20 plus 1 over minus J10, and when we're done, 
that should be equal to V1 phasor. If we do the arithmetic on the denominator, we should end up with 3 at angle 90 divided by, and I'm going to do a little bit of rounding here, 0 0.206 at angle 14.03 degrees. And if you do the arithmetic on that one more time, it should be fairly easy because you can just divide the magnitudes and subtract the angles. We should end up with 14.55 volts at angle 75.96 degrees. And that is V1 and our first effort at nodal analysis with phasers.